my name is Sebastian and in this video I want to show you how to use Git on the command line effectively. If you're a developer, I hope you use Git and the version control system and you might want to use Git in your IDE integration or some other what you see is what you get tool of sorts, but I really encourage you to try it out to use Git on the command line and with a few tips and tricks you can become more effective with it. So how we use Git in general is as such that we have the command line here available. So it's just Git typing into your command line. And then of course you have all sorts of commands so which you probably uh, know about. So let's quickly uh, change into a Git um, repository where here in my Z shell integration, you already see a branch and, and so on. So you probably use commands such as git status, right? And you type them all over again. So that's how a lot of developers use git that you say, well, you type this on the command line and then typically, well, you have commands such as git commit, git push and so on and so forth. So that's already something that you say, well, in order to use Git here on the command line, you have to sort of understand what is going on. And quite often, I think that's a benefit as opposed to your IDE integration that might just auto add some uh, changes in your files. For instance, you actually have more control if you do things on the command line. So if I just look into a file that I have here that says hello, if I change this to hello world and say, OK, now please just um, show me what has been changed, then this is, well, modified, but not staged for a commit. So, well, if you know about Git, then you know what that means. I would need to add the file or add something, for example, the uh, current directory recursively, and then this will be part of it. Okay, and then we can go and commit. But the first tip I wanna show you is besides typing these commands all over again, we could use what is called an alias. So instead of saying, well, you have to type uh, git status, you can just have an alias such as this one that just expands. If you want to check out my uh, configuration, I'll link this down below. And this is just faster. So instead of typing git commit or things like that, we can just use an alias for that. That is faster. For the commit, I either use a commit um, like this, which adds, um, which opens up your default editor. For me, I use Vim on the command line a lot as well, so I'm quite happy with that. Um, otherwise, you could also say you would like to provide a message here uh, yourself. I think that's also quite fast, so once you get used to it, I'm more happy with this than with the IDE integration, to be honest, but, well, um, that might be uh, different for everybody. And then you see, okay, this has been done a little bit faster. So the first thing is alias is very important. You can check them out which ones are available on your system. And chances are if you use a shell such as the Z shell, especially with um, the oh my Z shell integration, then a lot of them come out of the box. And so just um, you can check this out by using alias and then searching for Git, which ones um, are available already. And of course, you can define your own ones. So this, I think, really makes sense, especially with uh, commands that you use all the time. Git commit is one, git push. Here is one that already says git push origin and then into uh, the current branch uh, here. So it finds out the branch that you're currently in. And this just makes it, well, a little bit easier. So that's certainly something that you want to check out in order to be able to type faster. And with that, it's already quite helpful then to use it in a command line because then it's fun because you're not typing all over again. You're just, well, seeing what commands you would like to do. And I think you have a better overview than what's actually uh, going on. But then there's more for the type of shortcuts or functionalities that you use all the time. It even makes sense uh, to have um, a shell shortcut. So for example, you might know about control L. If I want to clear my shell, th that's a shortcut. And of course, you can define your own ones. So for example, if I type control G for Git, then it does actually a clear and a status. So I will link uh, to my configuration down below. But that's just something I noticed because I kept, you know, doing this, even with an alias git status, it's a little bit slower than just saying, well, you know, control G. 
and I do this all the time so it really makes sense to have some sort of shortcut for it in the same way like you would clear or do something else or for me the ls command I just want to be a little bit more um, effective on the command line if you're interested in that topic in general of being more effective as, as a developer I also have a course on that uh, link down below which you can check out but now a little bit more about Git, because what is also pretty cool, you can add your own Git sort of scripts or your own Git commands, which works as follows that you say, well, maybe you know about this uh, command git log that then just shows you the log of what happened, which you can actually uh, display a little bit differently. So for example, you can uh, have this in a sort of graph in an ASCII art graph. So these are now my uh, two commits that I have and this should be a graph. We will um, enhance this a little bit more so it actually looks uh, like a graph, um, which then already is some sort of replacement for uh, what you see is what you get tool, right? So then that's already quite nice to uh, display something visually. Let me just, um, for example, have some feature branch and say, well, we would like to um, have a new file for a feature. I'm a feature and then we add this here so we have the status um, we have to add this first we commit something here add it feature and then what we have we say okay now we have more commits and if I now go back to main and say well I would um, change my file again and say okay updated file again and now if I have a look at my graph it actually looks more like a graph so I see the different branches and here you see okay then you have some sort of graph uh, visualization going on so if I for example uh, switch to another uh, project that that is on my github and have a look through it you see okay this is actually some sort of uh, branch including some uh, merges and so on and so forth so with this, you already have some sort of overview what's going on. And I think that's quite helpful to do this on the command line and um, how this works. So this is if you try it out, that's not a git command, an official one. But what you can do, you can say you can define your own commands and how this works in Git is that you just have to have some script or some executable in your path that says Git minus something and that something then will be used as a um, subcommand. So you can then say Git graph. So that's the same that comes from Git. And where does um, this come from? Git graph. Well, I defined this here. So that's a, uh, just the script I included. And if we say, well, how does this look like? That's that. So um, again, I will link um, this in my material. So that's just a git log command basically with a graph and some uh, sort of pretty printing of all of these commits that you see. And then of course I have an alias to be able to type this faster where then you see this graph. So the cool thing is, well, this is a combination of a few uh, features here, but the cool thing is that you can extend this functionality with your sort of own Git commands that just make it again a little bit faster. Especially you might have seen, well, you know, in um, Subversion or in some other uh, tooling, it was a little bit easier to commit it faster because I always have to add, commit, push, pull, and so on and so forth, which, well, Guess what? You can also uh, create a functionality for. So I included a git. I call this update. So again, that comes from my side. Uh, but you can write a similar thing, which looks as follows that you say, well, go to, well, first of all, go to the top level that basically goes to the root of this um, a directory. So I might be in a subdirectory. So go back to add all of them recursively. Add um, and commit then here you can have a message that you can provide so I can say git uh, update uh, something as a message or per default I say updated which sounds like a stupid message but quite often if you have some sort of config directory it just well it's good enough and then say well do a pull rebase first to so commit it do a rebase pull to just be on uh, top of the commits if somebody else um, pushed something before and then do a git push so basically all of that together, which I call update. And that's so much faster because then I can just say, uh, well, git update something. So let me change uh, something again. And I say, okay, just update that. And well, now it doesn't work because it actually doesn't have a remote repository. So at first it said updated and it committed it, but then what uh, failed here, well, the uh, pull push. But 
we can um, see this in a second uh, later on so at least the update worked here and this is just um, one functionality to make this a little bit easier so you can define your own scripts that just help you by calling them git dash and then something that then you can invoke in that regard okay but now a little bit more for the integration that you might have with your projects especially if you're on github there's another two cool functionalities um, out there one is called hub like github and the other one is the git um, github cli so um, actually this one came first hub um, let's have a look at this hub is basically a wrapper for git so you can alias that and how this works is that you say well hub basically works as follows that it has all of the git commands so you could just alias it here as you see and then it also includes commands for well interacting with the github repository so basically i could say well uh, switch to a github repository my favorite coffee one and then i can say hub for example while well, hub issue uh, create or hub issue list so i could say well just please go to github and create an issue for this repository that is connected here so for my remote repository favorite coffee and then you can create an issue which is pretty cool and helpful if you say well you would like to do this from the command line or maybe you already took some notes about what is uh, what is wrong here and then you could just uh, take this here um, or of course I could say well um, hub issue list I think yes so that's just lists the issues that I then have in my repository so you can check that out which is just kind of cool if you want to use this um, on a command line similarly instead you could also use this a little bit newer command line uh, client that is called um, well gh for github so that's now the uh, somewhat newer um, github functionality which is just for github so that's not a wrapper on git works slightly differently but basically similar functionality i can uh, list some issues create some issues and so on and so forth you can have a look um, at that what is available these two command lines are also quite helpful for managing pull requests so i can make some commits locally and then already create a pull request from the command line so that's also uh, sort of cool um, i can say for example issue and then uh, say github issue uh, list and then you get the same sort of information so the same thing is available how these two interact uh, with each other well the hub uh, was sort of first and there's even a blog post out there that you can see how this uh, works together from the github developers um, now the slightly newer one is the uh, gh one so you might uh, maybe want to check out this first but they both do a somewhat similar thing slightly different syntax but just in general it's pretty cool to have this sort of integration from the command line that it can say you can interact with your github repositories from here as well you don't need to leave your command line especially helpful if you already wrote sort of your issue or your pull request message in the command line in your editor of choice and then you could uh, paste this in here and then just use it as such all right and as one more thing i want to show you a kind of interesting integration how you can also use a git repository not just from a, um, your server but also on your file system where you say well basically i could for example say make a new directory i call this git um, repo and the git repo should then be basically git in it a bare repository so you can think of this somewhat as your well what usually would reside under your dot git directory but here without this working copy branch without this working copy directory where you say this is sort of think of it as like the server side on the um, directory that you can actually use and interact with if i would like to check this out from a different um directory here on my system so for example i could say git clone and then clone uh, this git repo now i cannot uh, create the same directory so i call this uh, else git repo whatever and then it clones into this subdirectory and then this is basically the connection to that so i could say okay now i uh, create a file here and then say um, this file then will be added and committed 
and then you could say okay now please push that and then it is basically pushed into the other directory here so here now that is my um, repository which I can use I sometimes do this actually on a server environment I also have a git sir a server how do I do this well I basically have a hosted version of a root server or a virtual server that then um, has some git repositories and I just access them via SSH so that's basically um, your git repo server right there if you want to create it um, as such why am I doing this well for some other reasons when I want to store this on my own uh, systems but also you could then have some extensions here so what is kind of interesting especially if you do this on your file system or the command line if then if you say um, I have some hooks here that you can write yourself which is a little bit similar to what github does with um, the github actions so here i can say there are some hooks available that basically are triggered once a certain action occurs so uh, one of the most well um, widely used is um, or famous ones is the post update hook so that happens well after an update which means usually after a push so in order it's already um, explained to you how this works in order to create that you have to just um, rename this to post update and then you can say hello I'm a server or I'm a repository something like this and you can then um, execute your uh, some actions so now it's some time and then I basically can say okay now please do this um, remove or rename that to just post update and then what you can do if you say I change something in my working copy so here I have this file I can change it and say okay please um, now I can use this command update that and then what happens well I do an add I do a commit and then pull push and the push here does the following that from remote it gives you some information and now it says okay hello I'm a repository now it's this and this which is really helpful if then you want to trigger some more actions so now I could just execute anything I want in that script for example on the server side now I could say okay please update some other repositories which is what I'm actually doing quite often um, to say I have this and this is just a very simple form of a you know pipeline quote unquote if you want so to say okay now update some other directory restart some server restart some job uh, run another script and so on and so forth which is then just kind of helpful in order to build uh, these sort of uh, pipelines just on the file system so it doesn't have to be an actual remote uh, server sort of you can actually do this um, here on the file system as well which I uh, think that's just kind of interesting and these are just some tips and tricks that actually make it more effective for me to use git on the command line and I kid you not I always use uh, git on the command line and especially with a few tricks mainly aliases shortcuts and these sort of integrations with your own scripts and other command line tools such as the github integration it's just really effective to use it on a command line to stay on the command line and then just do your regular git workflow and you can all do that while staying on the keyboard which is kind of cool so if you found this helpful, you might want to check out a course that I have on developer productivity, link down below. And if you like this video, I would really appreciate a like. And as always, thanks a lot for watching. Bye.